What a what a what a thing! It was a ten play, ninety two yard drive leading the Seahawks to a stunner over the Eagles. Unless you've been paying attention to what's been going on with the Eagles, then it's not that shocking. Let's be honest, and we'll get to that hopefully with LaShawn McCoy. If not, we'll handle it on our own. I mean, when you look at this throw from Drew Locke, you're staring at it right now. Twenty eight seconds to go. Okay, and so you saw that. I mean, they're all celebrating. It's all great. He's so happy. Look at look at him go. Look at Gino. He's excited. Um, the the extension grab, the full thing from the rookie friend of the show, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, what a moment in Seattle as the Hawks steal one from Philly. And it shakes up the playoff picture, which I like. It's like a snow globe. Tis the season, right? Take the playoff picture, shake it up, and here we go. The Seahawks still on the outside looking in. The wind pulls them into a tie with who? The Vikings and Rams, of course. Who told you the Rams would be running into the playoffs with Kyron Williams? We did. Those are the, um, There's a tie for the final two spots in the wild card, uh, and it snaps a four-game skid, by the way. The Eagles' third straight loss drops them back into second place in the NFC East, and they still would win the division um, if they beat the Giants twice and the Cardinals, which is doable. Or is it? We'll talk about it. Seattle, they get the love this morning because the win is as clutch as it gets. They lose this one. The season's over. It's done. They're they're shipping their cars home, like Nate Burleson would say. They're all but planning their vacations, whatever. After falling behind 10 zip, backs against the wall. It wasn't just one person. The entire team turned it on. Kenneth Walker. We talk about him a lot. Incredible. Over 100 yards. The touchdown you're looking at right now. DK came alive on the final drive to move Seattle all the way down the field. Drew Locke made huge throws and Julian Love's two interceptions helped seal the deal. Team win. You love to see it. And Seattle now stays in the mix in the NFC, everybody. And it's the Titans. It's the Cardinals. It's the Steelers. That's who they've got left on the schedule. You think they have a chance of getting in? I do. I think they could do it if they keep winning like this. And Pete Carroll, I'd like to see it. Now for the Eagles, and I hope we dig in with this, to into this with LaShawn a little bit later. This team, you know, and it's, I said it a couple times this year when they were winning games in weird ways. I said, this team doesn't look like the Super Bowl team and it's great. It's showing different grit, Brazilians, whatever. They're finding different ways to get done. But now it's officially a scary thing. It's officially bad because this, is, this does not even closely resemble anything. Jalen Hurts, if you, um, Miss Turn he's the turnover king right now. I don't get it. He's tied for the league lead with 17. He that's double what he had last year, more than double. He had eight last year, guys. So you have to wonder what's going on here. Is it how what if you're making a pie chart like sixth grade vibes? Is how much of it's the injuries and what affected things? How much of it is, you know, the Brian Johnson uh effect or the toll or all of that? How much of it is losing the Super Bowl last year? And how much maybe they, that affected this team um, on their campaign to try to get there again and win it this time? Either way, Jalen's making some weird, uncharacteristic, but critical mistakes over this three-game losing streak. I can't believe they have a three-game losing streak. Marissa must be losing her mind back there in LA. Now, the run game, where's the run game? Why hasn't that gotten going? The defense, did they do? Okay, we'll give it to them. They looked better last night, but they imploded with the game on the line too at the end. How do you let Drew Locke put that together? Um, things are not positive right now for the Eagles. Maybe Shady joins us and maybe he has some positivity. Um, for the Niners, I think Debo not, isn't going to come on the show dancing today <laughs> with a huge leg up for the one seed, thanks to the Eagles losing. Let's take a second here to talk about these Niners, shall we? I didn't get a chance to fully dig into them because we just have too many great guests to talk to that I can't really like wax poetically on everything I'd like to. Um, I feel like there's a lot of arguing over, it's like embarrassment of riches stuff. Who deserves credit? Um, and it's sort of overshadowing what the team and these players are doing right now. And if you go start with McCaffrey, everybody like mentions his name, but nobody talks about it. He put up 187 yards, three touchdowns, right? In this win over the Cardinals. And he's joined some real rare air in the process. That performance puts him over 1,800 total yards, 20 touchdowns on the year. We're talking the Tomlinsons. We're talking the Priest Holmes, the Marshall Fox, the Emmett Smiths, the Eric Dickerson's people. That makes him the ninth player in NFL history to hit both of those marks in the first 14 games games of the season. I mean, look at the list. Six of them are Hall of Famers. This is the elite of the elite. And he's doing it in an era where these feature backs are fewer and farther between. They don't really exist. They're like the unicorn. They're extinct or at least endangered, right? If he keeps up this pace, this is going to be one of the best running back seasons we've seen in the history of the NFL. I can't remember who called him the um, 
Uh, who, oh, Darren Sproles called or Delaney Walker called him the great white hope yesterday. That's what he said. And we'll get to that with Shady. We'll get to that with um, with our guy Debo. Of course, this is one of the best running back seasons we've seen in the history of the NFL. We've got to give that some some separate love. And then on to Brock Purdy, of course, 17 touchdowns, two picks, guys, over the last six games. That's moved him into rare air. We just want to give you guys the historical context because we're sick pups about that stuff on the show. Brock passed undefeated. Brock passed undefeated 07 Tom Brady on a single season passer rating list, okay? He's now the fourth highest rated we've ever seen in NFL history. And if he keeps playing the way he's played over the past six weeks, he's going to have a legit shot to catch Rodgers at the top. So we're talking about someone who's objectively putting together one of the greatest statistical seasons we've ever seen at the quarterback spot. Debo is historic as well. We've seen him um, and we'll talk to him in a bit. The defense has rebounded. They're now up to number two as far as scoring defense in the league. The point is these 2023 Niners people, they are really, you know, we can argue. Why argue? Just enjoy all of it. Like, just be happy about it. They are as special as any team, which, of course, puts the insane, immense amount of pressure on a guy like Kyle Shanahan's shoulders, on John Lynch's shoulders, guys, you know, like Kyle Shanahan, I think about him in these big spots, get to the Super Bowl. He left his backpack with the, you know, his play calls and his play, all these things like it, this can't happen. The, the, there's no reason that this team won't go and win the Super Bowl. They better go and win the Super Bowl. Like I've never witnessed a special team like this, truly, that I've gotten to cover in my time covering the NFL. And I, I'm not about fighting about who deserves credit for it. Like they got, they, they all deserve the credit dish it out, send the love notes, send the, you know, like whatever, like it's all incredible. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here, do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.